Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. Presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm with offices in Missouri and Illinois. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. We have an interesting topic today. The topic is, should I file my divorce first? This is one of the most common questions lots of individuals going through a divorce have. They wonder whether it matters. You know, do they need to hire an attorney, get all the paperwork completed and file first? Will it make a difference? Does it matter? Does it not matter at all? And that's a question lots of individuals have. And so we're going to address that topic here today because it's one of the most really common questions individuals have. And frankly, a lot of people just don't know. They don't know whether it makes a difference or whether or not it matters. So we're going to address that topic here today. And then as a follow-up to the episode, you can go to familylawheadquarters.com. Coincidentally, we have an article on this exact topic, and it's titled, Should I File My Divorce First? The date of the article is September 29, 2015. So as a follow-up to the episode today, check out the article. Definitely an interesting topic and one uh, that lots of individuals have lots of questions about. So let's go through the topic. Let's talk about it again. The question the individuals have is, does it matter uh, whether I file first or not? Will this make a difference? Obviously, lots of people sort of on the fence about the divorce out of the gates. You know, they're still thinking that perhaps they can save their marriage, that maybe counseling will work. And and based on that viewpoint, obviously individuals who aren't 100 percent sure they want a divorce, you know, they want to hold off on on filing that divorce because they're thinking they want to save the marriage. And then once they uh, file it, then obviously it's the point of no return for a lot of individuals. They think once that court files open, once the case has been filed and their husband or wife have been served, then there's no going back. And so obviously for lots of reasons. Uh, folks have a lot of hesitancy really at times in terms of filing a divorce because they're thinking they can save the marriage. On the other hand, on the flip end, people are worried that, you know, in really looking at the situation while they still hold out hope, uh, while they still think there might be a chance to save the marriage, the truth for a lot of people is, is, you know, they honestly recognize that the chances of it working are bleak. Uh, might be a situation where it's been a kind of a long time coming, been disagreements, sort of communication problems for a long period of time, and they just look at the situation and they think, you know, well, I'd like to save the marriage, well, I don't want a divorce. Obviously, in looking at it, it just doesn't seem, um, you know, from a percentage perspective that the chances are really very good that the marriage can be saved. And so, you know, they don't want to jeopardize themselves by not filing first. They don't want uh, to be put in a poor position uh, by waiting to file. And so, again, that's where this question comes into play. People, A lot of people not wanting to jump the gun, file the case. On the flip end, they don't want to be put in a bad spot if they wait to file the case. And that sort of sets up the whole issue and the whole question in terms of whether or not it matters who files first. Here's the deal to sort of break it down uh, for the listeners out there. And, again, I would obviously state in any uh, situation the facts are different. Uh, certainly one case is different than another case, so there could be different considerations. And certainly anybody who's thinking about filing for divorce ought to consult with an attorney and go through what the specific pros and the specific cons might be in regard to their individual situation. But having said that, the person who files first is the petitioner. Um, You know, some states use the language plaintiff. So if you're not in Missouri, uh, where I primarily practice, if you're in a different state, uh, you know the the word plaintiff can be used at times interchangeably with petitioner, and then the other party is the respondent. Uh, some states will use different terminology there theoretically, and they, maybe defendant is used. But I mean, the person who files first is the petitioner in Missouri. The other party is the respondent. And at the end of the day, here's the difference between uh, filing first and not filing first, which is this, which is. You know, let's say a case doesn't settle. So the divorce is filed. There's no settlement agreement reached. Uh, the parties just aren't able to come to terms. They're not able to come to an agreement. And then let's say the case then gets set for trial because at the end of the day, if parties can't settle, uh, the only way to really resolve a divorce ultimately is for a trial to take place. Now, having said that, most cases do settle. Uh, most cases don't. Uh, end up in a trial. I mean, ultimately, in most cases, cooler heads prevail, and there's some sort of middle ground forged. Um, but in some cases, that's not 
not the way it works out. And so ultimately, there's a trial in order to conclude the divorce. At the end of the day, the petitioner goes first to trial. So the petitioner is able to call witnesses first, uh, put on their evidence first. And in a lot of ways, you're able to make a first impression with the court in terms of the case. They can definitely help set the issues, sort of frame the issues for the judge. And so they go first, whereas the other party that is the respondent, and so they get to cross-examine witnesses uh, that the petitioner originally calls. They get to cross-examine, and then at the conclusion of the petitioner's case, they're able to call their own witnesses uh, into court, sort of counterpunch, if you will, uh, then bring up the issues they want to bring up, uh, uh, introduce the evidence they think is important to the court. And, and so that's really your difference, is at a trial, the petitioner goes first, uh, the respondent goes second. So kind of analyze this and think about this practically. Again, most cases settle, right? Uh, most cases do. Now, some cases take longer to settle than others, but ultimately most cases settle. And so practically speaking, if parties are able to settle their divorce case, does it matter uh, who's the petitioner and who's the respondent? Really, probably not. Uh, because the case is settling, there is no trial, there is no evidence being presented in a formal way. And so if parties are able to settle, probably not going to make any real difference. Uh, that said, take the cases where there has to be a trial in order to conclude the divorce, and it might be uh, a hearing in the middle of the case. Like sometimes uh, in a divorce case, there will be uh, temporary motion hearings. In Missouri, we call them uh, motion pedente light which are these hearings in terms of how custody is going to work while a case is pending or how child custody, child support, uh, so on and so forth will work while the case is pending. So take a case where there's either a trial to conclude the divorce or a, a hearing in the, in the midst of a divorce to help determine how things are going to work while the divorce is pending. Uh, in these cases, the petition goes first. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, first impressions can matter, uh, judges can be very busy, have lots of cases on their docket. Uh, obviously, they have to make lots of difficult decisions. And I think a lot of attorneys would argue uh, that uh, making a first impression can be important, that sometimes judges um, can come up with initial impressions about cases based on evidence they hear, that at times can be hard to overcome. So uh, a lot of attorneys would argue advantage to filing first if there's going to be a hearing uh, because first impressions matter. On the flip end, some attorneys might argue, you know, counterpunching uh, can be uh, more effective, having the other side put their cards on the table first and saying what they're going to present can be an advantage because then as the respondent, an attorney is able to know uh, uh, what the other side's perspective is before they even present their evidence, and there could be a tactical advantage to that. And then obviously different judges are different. Some judges uh, might be more influenced or, or swayed in theory by what they hear last versus what they hear first. And so while some would argue first impressions matter, you know, some would argue on the flip end uh, that the final impression is what's most important. And so that's where you get this debate uh, in terms of does it matter who files first? And again, what it comes down to is if there's a hearing or a trial, the petitioner goes first, the respondent goes second. And some attorneys would argue first impressions matter. Some would say the final impression is what matters the most. Reasonable attorneys can differ, uh, certainly disagree, have different viewpoints on it. I mean, all things being equal, uh, my experience, my personal experience is that first impressions can matter. Uh, with judges having lots of cases, being able to put the evidence on first and frame the issues uh, uh, theoretically can be a slight, slight advantage. But again, if parties uh, are able to uh, uh, reconcile their marriage uh, in order to not get divorced, certainly nobody should jump the gun and file the case. Uh, if there's a chance the marriage can be saved, folks should try to save it because at the end of the day, this isn't a huge deal uh, reasonable folks can certainly disagree uh, in terms of whether filing first uh, is is any kind of advantage at all. Some would say it is not, uh, but again, it comes down to who presents evidence first at trial. Now, having said that as well, uh, in child custody cases, when child custody is part of a divorce, uh, sometimes there can be issues where the husband and wife are living in different states, and there can be a real issue about what state the divorce is going to take place in. So is it going to take place in one state versus another? Um, 
you know, the laws can vary in terms of uh, things like child support, spousal maintenance. Uh, custody determinations can be somewhat different from one state to another. Um, and so in cases where there's a jurisdictional question about what state a case is going to be litigated in, uh, then certainly uh, there might be an argument that filing first can have a distinct advantage in a case like that, particularly if one parent um, uh, is is really uh, – uh, you know, find it really important that the kids ultimately uh, reside in one state versus another. And so there can be uh, a distinct advantage in those types of cases to filing first, theoretically. But that's really what it comes down to. Uh, that's really the issue, which is the petitioner goes first, the responder goes second. And to break it down for you, uh, that, that at the end of the day is really kind of the analysis, and that's what folks have to consider again. Uh, for any any individuals out there, if you're contemplating filing for divorce, obviously consult with an attorney about your specific situation. Uh, you know, no, we're just talking about general principles today, but there could be different considerations in your case uh, that you certainly want to address with an uh, with an attorney. Uh, but again, that's the topic today. Definitely an interesting topic, a common question. We wanted to make sure we covered it on Family Law Talk. So stay tuned to our next exciting episode coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk. Family Law Talk. With Kirk Stange. Visit StangeLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stange Law Firm to work for your family today. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. Neither the Supreme Court of Missouri or Illinois reviews or approves certifying organizations or specialist designations. The information you obtain on this podcast is not, nor is it intended to be legal advice. You should contact an attorney for advice regarding your individual situation. We invite you to contact us and welcome your calls, letters, and electronic mail. Contacting us does not create an attorney-client relationship. Please do not send any confidential information to us until such time as an attorney-client relationship has been established. And finally, past results afford no guarantee of future results. And every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. Kirk Stingy is responsible for the content. Principal Place of Business, 1750 South Brentwood Boulevard, Suite 401, St. Louis, Missouri, 63144. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear. Show off our dance moves. Obsess over every little detail. Hold your hand through it all. Smile bravely when it's time to let go. Make your dreams come true. The things we do for love. Only at David's Bridal. 